Perfect. All right, Mark, thank you so much for coming on on the podcast. I really appreciate you taking your time. Um, yeah, if you could just, you know, introduce yourself. I'm excited to hear a lot about your journey, what you're doing now. And um, yeah, the stage is yours. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I've had um, a roller coaster ride. Um, professional footballer over in England. Um, I started off in the lower leagues. I did my YTS from a young age, from the age of 16. I think that's a scholarship over there. Um, and uh, yeah, learned a lot. We had to put nets up, clean football boots, um, you know, and do all the horrible jobs you had to do as a young lad. But it grounded me. Um, it brought me to him, into a man's world, really. Um, and from there, I was told mm -hmm. I weren't going to get a contract. Um, so I had to uh, go to League Two. Burnley was in the championship at the time. Um, that's the fourth tier of English football, um, you know, to try and make a name for myself. And, um, yeah, I spent uh, one year with Bury. Um, I joined Shrewsbury for three years. Um, due to a change of manager, I got released. Um, told I wasn't good enough. This was at 21, 22 years old. Um, I was on mm. my honeymoon at the time. Um, so it's really difficult. Wow. You, yeah, as a footballer, yeah. you've got to be mentally bulletproof and you have to deal with setbacks. Um, mm -hmm. A year later, I got a nice break at Hereford. That season, I scored three goals, um, one in the uh, away fixture and two in the home fixture against Bournemouth. And they signed me and the rest is history. And then I've gone on to, to play in the Premier wow. League. So it's been a great journey, enjoyable. Um, a lot of setbacks along the way, though. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I'm excited to dive in. So. Um, so where did you grow up playing your youth football then? So my youth football, I was um, I was at Burnley. Um, mm -hmm. in, in my final season with Burnley, I actually had a really good year. I scored 27 goals in 18 games. Um, I was wow. playing up front at the time. But um, uh -huh. I didn't physically de develop. Um, and I was mm. told I wasn't, I wasn't big enough for a striker. But I was quite athletic. I was quite agile. I was that type of striker. I was, I was not mm -hmm. right and out. You know, number nine centre forward, like they like back yeah. in the day. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, then I moved to the wing, and um, yeah, the rest is history with that. But yeah, it was it was incredible. I learned a lot from my youth team manager. He was old school, so mm. he um, he toughened me up a little bit. Mm, awesome. Yeah. So so uh, how old were you when you scored? You know, all those goals. Um. So. I scored the majority of my goals for Bournemouth. Um, the season before I signed for Bournemouth, I scored 13 goals that season from the left wing mm. um, in League uh -huh. Two. It was a really good season for me. It was a make-or-break season. I was 23 years old, and I thought, I've got a one-year contract here. I've got to show people what I can do. Otherwise, I can go one mm. way or the other. And uh, mm. you know, I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, that season, I scored three goals against Bournemouth. And, yeah, from the age of 24 to... 27 i scored an awful lot of goals for bournemouth um and when i was 27 we got promoted to the premier league so to score five goals as well in the premier league at the top flight yeah. and um, make 60 i think it's 67 i should really know there's 67 appearances in the premier wow. league um I've, I've just absolutely loved it yeah unbelievable so uh from a very young age did you always have the dream of wanting uh, to become a professional player yeah, I think it's every um, every young person's dream. You want to be a footballer, and um, of course. I just um, I had parents that encouraged me. Um, I was always a winner from a young age. I wanted to win, and um, you know maybe I should have taken my school in a little bit more serious. But I only had one yeah. goal in mind. I wanted to be a professional yeah. footballer. I wanted to do everything in my power um, to mm. to make that dream come true, and. Um, I think I use the quote all the time, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's what 100%. I've done from a young age. Uh, there was people 100%. around me that were, were more, um, they were more talented footballers than me. Um, but, you know, it's that work rate um, that you need to, to make it to the top level. 100%. So, so you said um, uh, you played your youth football throughout Burnley. Did you... How old were you when you started playing there? Were you a really young age, like four or five, or when did you when did you start over there? So I I was my mum and dad encouraged me to enjoy my football from a young age, and I was playing Sunday league football just for my local uh -huh. teams up until 13, 14. and then wow. um, Burnley signed me at fifteen, 
Um, I spent one year there and then it was make a break. Do you get a contract? Mm. Don't you get a contract? And yes. um, the youth team manager took a shine into me and he was absolutely amazing. Terry Pashley, he was called at the time, and uh, he developed mm. me as a player, uh, both mentally, physically. Um, and he taught me how to deal with setbacks. Um, if I dive mm. out of a tackle and jump over a tackle, he'd be chasing me down the touchline, kicking water bottles everywhere, <laughs> and giving me <laughs> yeah. a hard time. So, no. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think the key is enjoy the process, work hard, and play with a smile on your face. And if you're good enough, 100%. then some someone will pick you up and find you. 100%. So how did Burnley discover you at, at, at 15? Um, I had a really good game. The season uh, when I was 14, I was playing for a team called Michelin, which was a local team, Burnley. Mm-hmm. And that season, me and my strike partner, we scored 125 goals between us. Wow. And uh, Burnley was watching me when I scored 10 goals in a game. Um, and uh, you know, <laughs> they took a shine to me. I went for a trial and done really well. Um, wow. I'll be scoring wow. 10 goals in this modern day of football. But back yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, um, it was, again, it's, you need to work hard. But you need to be at the right place at the right time with, with the right person watching you to you know, a little bit of a lucky break, whether it's a bit of luck or God's blessing. Um, I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. So so you were playing with men from you said from uh you know that that young of an age, or were you playing was it youth football or was it just Sunday? Just for for people who don't know the English system and how it works, uh how did it kind of go? Yeah, so from the ages of 16 to 18, I was playing, even 15, I was playing the odd reserve game, youth team football. So mm-hmm. the reserves, you can you can be playing against 30, 35-year-old um, professionals that are really experienced. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I got a really, we had a really small squad at the t- time as well. So our youth team, the youth team is from the ages of 16 to 18. But because we had mm-hmm. that smaller squad, first team squad, we were playing reserves team football as well against men. Um, and at 17 years old, um, I got a loan uh, deal to Kidderminster. They were playing in the conference, mm-hmm. which is the league below League Two in England now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, got absolutely kicked to death. I was a, a, a cocky little winger coming into the conference. Yeah. And, uh, uh-huh. yeah, they just wanted to kick me. So, uh, 17 years old was my real first taste of um, professional football. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And then, you know, to go back to what you said before, I mean, uh, you know, there's these cliche sayings, you never know who's watching and, um, you know, you can say it as much as you want. Uh, and, and people say that they're cliche sayings and they're old, but they're cliche sayings for a reason. So, uh, like what you said there, I mean, I think, you know, the most important thing that I, that I try to emulate and, you know, tell young footballers is you really never know who's watching. So, Whenever you show up to a pitch, you always want to try to be the hardest worker and the best player there because, you know, like you said, you know, Burnley was there on that day that you scored 10 goals. And, you know, who knows if you showed up there uh, that day and you weren't ready to play. Like you said, you know, right time, right place, a little bit of luck, and then you performed. So I think that's big. Yeah, you're so right, mate. I mean, um, you know, fail to prepare, pre- prepare to fail. Um, every time you step foot on the field, every time you step foot on the training ground, you've got to give 100% because you train mm. as you play. You've got to leave it all out there. You never know when you're going to kick your last football. Um, and you've just got to do yourself justice. Just, you know, do everything in your power to be the best version of yourself day in, day 100%. out. And um, I think it's, you know, if, if you're doing that, you've given everything for the cause and you can look back and say, look, I wasn't good enough. I give everything. It wasn't meant to be. Then, you know, you can sleep at night. But if you have that exactly. little bit, of, little bit of doubt in your mind that you've not given it all, then, you know, you won't be able to sleep with, and, you know, you'll, you'll kick yourself for not giving it your all. But I believe if you do those things and stick to the fundamentals, um, you'll go a long way in the game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you said. You know, you got to control what you can control. And what I always try to say is like, you know, you got to take your football development, you got to take your own individual development in your own hands. Because nowadays, what I see, um, you know, on social media, which, you know, has its pros and its cons, you know, you can either use it in a good way or a bad way. 
some people think that this is it's an easy path and that's that's one of the main reasons that i have this podcast and i bring guys like you on and i want to get more into your journey and talk about obstacles and hard things in the way but it's not sunshines and rainbows there's always going to be things in your way there's always going to be you know bs and and things that you have to deal with and and just like you said i think it's like when you i always refer to it as like you are your own asset you know like a business you are your own product so the more you can put and invest in yourself and the better you can make yourself as a product by you know working on the right things you know in the gym with the ball technique taking care of your recovery your sleep your nutrition which you know i see you're huge about um that when you take like you said when you can take control and you really are 100 percent dialed in on that stuff if you really want this dream like you said and you give it your all and you don't the biggest thing is not to have regrets like you said yeah you're so right i mean um all the small percentages really do add up your nutrition your extras after training whether you do 10 15 free kicks just after a tough mm. session even though you're tired just do it because you see the best you look at beck and you look at gigs you they took the yoga they took the nutrition their extras after training mm -hmm. just stretching all the small yes. percentages and I always bang on about the nutrition side of things. If you don't yes. get your nutrition right, then you're not going to be able to go again the next day. I mean, the recovery process 100%. is massive. I mean, especially when you've got a Saturday, Tuesday game, you yes. go out on a Saturday and, you know, drink loads of beer, not eat the right foods, have a takeaway. Your inflammation is going to stay with you for two or three days. And come yes. Tuesday night when you're having to go again for 90 minutes, around the 50, 60 minute mark, you're going to, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. And, um, up until probably the age of 25, 26, when I did my nutrition uh, uh, course and I educated myself a lot more, I didn't really realize the effect it had on my body. Mm. Because when you're young, you think, I can yeah. just keep running. You, you don't stretch. You, you don't do the small percentages you yeah. should do. But um, when I got into the championship and then the Premier League, I needed to take it so much more seriously because... The athleticism yes. of, of, of the people playing are absolutely incredible. And, you know, you get found out. You're on match of the day. You don't want to be the one to make that mistake. So mentally, yeah. physically, um, whether it's nutrition, everything has got to be spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive in a little bit to that because I think that, that that's huge. And um, I think the biggest thing is like, uh, you know, people can read as much as they want about nutrition. They can learn as much as they want, but until they apply it, they don't see the, the immense benefits. And until they apply it consistently, like some people they'll say, all right, you know, I ate well for a week. I don't see any difference, but I mean, I'm sure you notice, I mean, for me, like one day, you know, having one day of, of, of proper nutrition, fueling yourself, right. The next day you just feel so much fresher, so much better. So um, what, what was the major difference that you noticed after, you know, really being, you know, disciplined and dialed in with, with those things, the nutrition. And just like you said, I mean, people don't realize how important it is for just the overall inflammation and helping you recover quicker. Yeah. It's a process like you just touched on there. Um, it's not gonna, you're not gonna feel great overnight. You need to stick with it. You need that consistency. Um, the biggest difference I know is just was, mentally i felt so much more alive yes. much more awake awake and um physically i could run all day i was doing 12 13k most weeks in games especially in the premier league and you know i felt really mm. good and then i could go again a few days later whereas when i was younger and i was maybe having a bit too much refined food I, back then we got mm. taught a big portion of pasta was really good fuel, but you yep. have to choose the correct pasta, wholemeal pasta, not white pasta. I mean, the amount of times we traveled on away games and we're getting white pasta, white rice, white bread, and I'm just thinking it's it's full of hidden sugars and it's not good yes. for us. So I'd be the busy one trying to say, oh, have you got any wholemeal bread? Have you got brown rice? That kind of thing, because mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. what an effect it has on your body. Um, but, you know, it, it's perception again and... I always bang on about the individual. Every individual is different and every individual yes. needs different things. You see some top athletes like that do things that you think, what has he done there? I mean, mm -hmm. but I always look for one, is it going to benefit me health wise? Two, is it going to affect my performance in a positive way? And then three, 
recovery wise you know can i recover again to go again the next day or whether it, even if you're having you know a down day where you you're recovering then mm-hmm. you know it's, it's it's really important so i look for longevity um, 100% and, 34 years old now to be honest i feel better than i did when i was 22 um that's awesome so i mean i try and practice what i preach and um yeah. you, you know bs as you as you like to say over there um <laughs> and uh i'm just uh i try to be humble but i try to be confident what i do because i know it works 100 percent. yeah i mean i want to go over a couple of things there i mean i think I think what you said there is really gold. You know, I don't think people realize the, the huge um, benefit that proper nutrition has on has on your mind and your cognition, your sharpness, and your focus. You know, I always get a lot of questions about how do you be sharper in, in you know how, how do you be sharper in training, which how do you be more concentrated in matches, um, and and I always try to refer to you know in daily life. I think that you should try to be present in every single moment don't multitask in daily life. And I think that transitions over into training, which is going to transition into games. But just like you said there, I mean, I think, um, you know, it's, it's especially in the top leagues, you know, in the championship in the EPL, I mean, the mind, you know, is obviously the body has to be up there, but the, you know, the mind and being focused for 90 minutes plus injury time is, is crucial because one second you turn off, it's a goal. So, um, you know, with that being said, and, and you saying that you feel better today than you did at 22, just I, I like giving, you know, these guys and girls who listen to this some practical advice. Can you kind of run us through a day in the life of, you know, um, of your life, you know, right now and, you know, what time you wake up, uh, what you eat and, and in terms of your training schedule? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, I, I try and set the alarm six. I'm, I'm up. I'm, I'm ready to go. I want to get up at six. I I vary it to be honest. I like to keep my metabolism guessing with not training at the moment. I'll give you a, I'll give you a day in when I was yeah. in the football world. Obviously, I'm I'm not playing at the moment. Awesome. Um, I'm hoping to get back to football, mm-hmm. you know, in a couple of months. Um, but yeah, football day. Yeah. I try and get up at the same time. I've got kids as well, so um, a, a routine is absolutely massive. Keeping in that routine, I know it's if 100%, I have a lion. If I have a, if I if I have a lion, I feel worse. As long as I get my eight yes. hours, whether I get to bed at 10, get up at six. It's as simple as that. So I start the day by having um, mm-hmm. a big glass of water with some salt and lime, Himalayan salt usually. Um, and then I will I'll probably have a coffee with some breakfast around half eight, nine o'clock because we were training at half 10. Um, I, I'm not one for eating first thing in the morning. Mm. Um, I like to mm-hmm. just let my, my body wake up and my food digest from the previous mm-hmm. night. I like to give it about 12 hours usually. So yeah, then I'd, um, I'd go to training. We'd start training at cool. half 10. I'd, I like to mm-hmm. do gym before. I, f- I believe I get better power outputs in training when I do gym before, whether it be lowers, whether it be uppers. So, I, so I'll do probably 40 minutes gym before training. And mm. that, that way I feel fresher as well. If I do, that's just individual. Uh, if, I do gym exactly. after, if I do gym after, I feel tired, fatigued. I don't feel like I can lift heavy to benefit me as an individual. Um, that's mm. not for everyone. A lot mm. of people like to do that. Some don't. Um, and then after training, um, I'll go do a bit of core um, for about half an hour. I always try and get my core in every day. I think it's really important for posture, back, mm. prevention of injury, just to name yes. a few. Um, and then recovery. Get mm-hmm. the ice baths in. Uh, get your shower in. And then go home, have a nice dinner, spend time with the family, um, you mm-hmm. know, go again the next day, get some good recovery in. Uh, so that's when yeah. I'm in football. When I'm out of football at the moment, I try and get up at similar time, six. Again, the water, salt, lime or lemon, yeah. whichever I prefer, whichever I fancy. Um, mm. And then again, uh, have some nice breakfast. Um, I like to sometimes do a fasted workout. Um, and then I sometimes, you know, do it after breakfast, but I give myself a little mm-hmm. bit of time for the food to digest. Um, mm-hmm. And then just keep the routine, have a lunch, yes. um, keep active, go for a walk with the family, enjoy life, have a smile on your face. Um, yes. And yeah, that's that's my life at the moment. 100%. Yeah, so, so like on a training day, what would you usually have for breakfast? 
So, yeah, for breakfast, I like to have um, scrambled egg, avocado, or any type of egg, really, with an omelette or mm -hmm. turkey breast. I always make sure I get mm -hmm. between 20 and 25 grams of protein and then top it up with carbs, yep. healthy fats, and try and avoid, obviously, white bread, all that kind awesome. of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not really... And what would uh, a lunch and dinner to... look like? Lunch and dinner, um, it depends on my type of training, my activity levels. If I've had a really tough session, um, I'll have a protein source, whether it be chicken, salmon, fish. I just love all lean protein sources yeah. with uh, a mixture of vegetables, uh, sweet potato, quinoa, brown rice as my carbs. Um, staying away from the refined carbs and sticking with complex carbs. And then dinner um again depending on the training load and what i've got coming up if i've got a game yes. the next day a match day a carb load i get loads of carbs in protein um obviously not people think carb loading mm -hmm. you need to smash a load of carbs you don't you just need mm -hmm. to pick the right ones that'll fuel because yeah. we, we all go off calculations as well i mean i know my body now but if you've got a new client you have to calculate the amount of carbs the activity level they need so i think it's important yes. that we take everything into account so mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty much me exactly awesome awesome and i think i think for what's most important to me is routine you know, whether you're in season, whether you're off season routine. And, uh, I always like to say, I got it from, um, one of these guys in the NFL. Uh, he has a, they have a podcast. I am athlete. He talks about routine over discipline. And, um, you know, I, I love discipline. I'm sure you're the same way, but when you have a routine down and when you stick with the routine, you automatically are disciplined. So, um, for me, I think, you know, what's also big is the circadian rhythm, you know, that your body clock is running, running, you know, you're going to sleep at the same time, you're waking up at the same time, because as we both know, you know, the mind likes routine, the body likes routine. So when you're in routine, waking up at the same time, training at similar times, eating at similar times, you know, going to go in uh, to the bathroom at similar time, body likes that. And as we both know, when, when, you know, your body is kind of in, in unison and it's uh, aligned well, it's able to perform well, you're able to think well. And I think all that, those little small details, like you said in the beginning, really, really add up. Yeah, definitely. Our body likes familiarity. Um, unless it comes to the gym, of course, then you need to mix it up. But yeah, routine is so important. And, you know, I like to plan my yeah. day. I like to plan my day the evening before. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to know what I'm doing and then, you know, you, there's no excuses then whether you want to write it down, you, you want to achieve all your goals and you want to do yes. it in a good manner. Um, I'm big on affirmations as well. I like to get up and I like to, you know, speak out loud to myself and, and visualize what, what, what I want to achieve mm. in that day. Um, when I'm playing football, I'm big on visualization. Um, mm. and you know, just sometimes it can be a, a negative if you're trying to sleep at night and you're trying to visualize yeah. that goal and the celebrations <laughs> after it. Um, yeah. but no, yeah, you, you spot on routine is so vitally important for, for the mind. Um, and you, you don't want to get brain fogs the worst thing. If you've got brain fog going into there, you feel physically, yes. mentally, emotionally drained. Um, then you're not going to get the best out of your day. You're not going to be productive with your work. So yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Of course, man. Now I, I'm huge on, on planning the day, you know, the night before and then the morning of, because just like you said, you know, you have it written down, you have, have the blueprint. All you got to do is take action. Um, but yeah, I want to go go into something that you said at the beginning of the conversation that I really, really loved. Um, you said, you know, mindset, that mindset come about of of being a winner. Yeah, being a Did winner you hear me? is... Sorry, mate, you broke up there. No worries, no worries. So you just said being a mindset is being a winner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did you get into that mindset? Um. I think I had it from an early age. I scored my first goal and I loved that feeling. Um, I just wanted to win at everything I did, whether it be on the training ground, I'd, you know, I'd be arguing and the lads used to, you know, tell me to calm down and I'd, uh, I'd be a bit mouthy. But 
you want to win it. You've either got it or you haven't. And I think it's yes. really important. Um, I mean, my kids, they, they do PE. And I'm like, you've got to win. <laughs> want to win for yourself. <laughs> you, you encourage them to have yeah. fun. If you lose, be a good loser. Be a good loser, first and foremost. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, when schools say, oh, it's the taking part that counts. And I, I can't have it. I want to be a winner. Exactly. Whether it be a board game, whether it be anything. So, I think that was instilled uh, into me in a young age. And uh, when I was playing at the age of 10, 11, um, I could have thought I'd have, I've had a really good game here. But my mum and dad had tell me what I needed to improve on to push me, which was a good yes. thing looking back then. So, yeah, I think having that winning edge, that winning mentality um, really does help you in the long run. And mm-hmm. it helps you to deal with setbacks as well because I see, lose, I see losing as a setup for a comeback. I mean, if you lose, you're not a loser. You're, you know, you're, you've learned something, you're growing as an individual and um, that will stand you in good stead for the future. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, and I completely agree with you. I think, you know, nowadays, you know, there's too many second, third, fourth place trophies. And, you know, as sad as it is, some people have just become soft. And and, and like you said, instead of looking at something as a failure, maybe you go back, you analyze what you did well, what you did poorly, and what you can improve for next time. And that's a better way to try to become a winner than, you know, looking down and accepting a fourth place trophy. Um, and I think football within the U.S., you know, is 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 poor in that way. You know, there's no promotion relegation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what's the real motivation, you know, sometimes of players to – obviously, you want to get three points. You want to win games. That, that's being an athlete and a footballer. But I think it's just that mindset in Europe and, and the other every other part in the world is just different because you have that possibility of, of getting up the leagues, you know. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big incentive, whether your motivation be making your family proud, whether it be financially, whether it be, you know, doing yourself proud, you know, whatever your motivation, then, you know, you've just got to do everything in your power to make it happen. Like you say, in, in America, the, I mean, the, the promotion and relegations, if, if there was to bring that in, it would make a massive difference, um, not only for, for that, but yes. for passion-wise. I mean, passion in the English game, uh, Premier League Championship, yeah. League One, League Two. It's absolutely incredible. You see that it's been really strange this season without the fans. I mean, yeah, you know, passionate the fans are. It's incredible. Yeah. And, uh, they love the football. Yeah. So I think that'd make a huge difference. And um, mm. yeah, um, I, I think in football, um, people just people just love the process. Me personally, I love the process. Going yes. back to routine again, I love knowing I'm going to be training at a certain time. I love knowing I'm going to be doing gym at a certain time. And it gets me ticking. It gets me yes. fired up. And I think it's really important, especially the younger generation who you touched on, maybe getting brought up a little bit soft. Back in back in the football world, back in the day when I was 16, 17, we had to do everything from putting nets up in the freezing cold, cleaning boots, putting mm. cones, bibs out, everything like that. But now in modern football, they don't have to do any of that. And I think that yeah. really does make a big difference growing up. 100%, 100%. And, you know, I've kind of seen it also, you know, um, you know, obviously it's it's different, different for me. I'm more in the modern game. But seeing, you know, players um, – some players who had huge, huge talent, like you said in the very beginning, hard work beats talent, but who had huge talent, were brought up in a great system where, you know, they kind of had their ass wiped uh, for them. And once they hit their first roadblock, uh, which is bound to happen in football, they, they just quit. They stopped. But the guys who were always grafting were, were taking the process step by step at a time those are the guys who are now at top levels, the guys who constantly put in the extras, like you said, from the beginning, day in, day out. And uh, we're the real, the, the real grinders, the real grafters, as you say in England, which I like the term, um, do well. And um, ha- have you seen that throughout your career? You know, the guys who were kind of, you know, a little bit babied, you know, and things like that. And uh, they didn't have to do the hard things and, uh, the things that they didn't want to do. Did you see them kind of drop off? And then the grafters, the guys who were putting in the extras and willing to do whatever it takes um, to get to the next level. Do you see? Did you see them kind of rise above? 
massively. I've seen so many talented individuals um, that have just not made it because they didn't want to tackle, they didn't want to put their head in, they didn't want to, uh, well, as they say, die for the cause. But um, it's it's so important. They were so talented, but they just didn't want it enough. I've seen players that were nowhere near the level of ability they had, but they went on to make an incredible career for themselves. Um, mm. There's, there's a player I played with, Jan Kermigan, absolutely incredible. His mindset was bulletproof. He was mm. he didn't make it as a professional until he was 26 years old. He was wow. grafting away, um, like just playing locally, that kind of thing. And he got his first break at 26. He signed for Leicester and then we signed him when he was about... I think he was about 30 when we signed him, 31. And he was an absolute machine. He was a striker, big, strong um immensely absolutely amazing great lad and that's just the willingness to want to succeed um mm. a lot of people give up at 21 22 because they think you know they're too too old but it's young yes. um yes. it's never too late for anyone you see people playing for england you you like sort of um ricky lambert i don't know if you remember ricky lambert he, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. he got his first cap when he was like 32 33 years mm -hmm. old and it's never too late. I think it's really mm. important that um, these individual players that have got so much talent, they back it up with that hard work as well. Yes. Um, yes. As I always say, on a football field, it's so easy running one way to try and score a goal. It's when you're running backwards um, to help your teammates out. That mm. Those are the ones that succeed. Mm. No, I really, really appreciate you saying that. And I, I hope and I'm sure the audience is going to love hearing you say that. Just a guy at your level. Um, and just a couple of things to add there. I mean, I think in, in, in today's day and age, everyone is too concerned with age. Uh, you know, they, they, they're concerned with, with the plan of others. Oh, um, he signed at this age. He got married at this age. He had kids at this age. I need to do that. Instead of, like you said, focusing on your own plan, your own process, because just like with nutrition and the gym, everyone has their own individual process. Um, and I fully, fully believe other thing, guys who are grafting have been playing top level first team football, guys like Wayne Rooney, they're playing first team football at 15, 16. They have all that volume, that load on their legs, but guys who are just coming up, you know, starting from the lower leagues, they aren't playing at that high of a pace. So their joints, their ligaments, their body isn't under as much stress as guys like Rooney. So that's why, you know, they may um and their career at earlier ages but i think what 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 you could probably attest to and what i've heard from you is at your age right now you, you said you feel better than you do it at, at 22 so with the modern science the modern knowledge that we have about recovery the body and, and working smart you know i think it's it's possible to break through at any age and, and play to um you know whenever your body is 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 you know, willing to keep going. And, um, you know, part of this podcast is I want to show the realities of football, but I also want to give people hope and the, 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 the possibility and positivity to keep on going. Yeah. I mean, you, it's, it's incredible. Um, social media is such a powerful tool. We never had any, I never had any of this back yeah. then. Um, you know, we was on the Nokia 3210s. Um, and <laughs> I just wish I was given the information and education that, you know, young lads coming up through the game can now get their hands on for free. I mean, yes. it doesn't cost anything. There's so much information out there, whether it be recovery, whether it be improving aerobic endurance, whether it be improving sprint speed, mm. whatever it may be, the information's there. So you know, do everything in your power to educate yourself. Because that was my biggest difference. Um, I didn't get promoted to the championship till I was 20, 25, 26 years old. And then oh. I knew I needed to take it really seriously. That's when I did my nutrition course. I, that's when mm. I sort of started looking after my body a lot better. Um, mm. There were athletes around me and I was thinking, I've got to... I'm looking at him and I've got to believe that I'm better than him both physically, mentally and technically as well. So I yes. went into every game with that belief and um, you know, anything's possible. Um, I had a dream. There's probably you know, 11, 12 year old kids um, watching that they've got the same dream and it's achievable if you show that confidence, mm -hmm. the willingness to develop, learn and improve as an individual. Um, mm. but, um, 
going back to it, yeah, just educate yourself and um, yeah. use social media wisely. Like you yeah. said, when we first started, um, it can be used as a powerful tool. It can have its negative effects as well, but I think there's more um, powerful tools um, to be used as opposed to the negative ones. So um, whether it be small percentages, whether it be day-to-day -day life, hydration again, I think it's not spoke about as much as it yeah. should be. Hydration is massively important. When I was a young lad, we used to uh, go for um, a can of fizzy pop and put it um, <laughs> by the goalpost until we needed a yeah. drink. So uh, I just wish back then I knew what I knew now. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's unbelievable what you said. And it's something that I preach all the time. Like, I think it's like, you know, nowadays, some people, they try, they depend too much on others. So like, like you said, you, you took your nutrition into your own hands because you realized how important it was. And um, instead of peppering, you know, probably your nutritionists and others with questions, you took it into your own hands. And one thing that I always love to say is like, the more you take those things into your own hands and control what you can control and know the work that you're putting on putting in the extras that you're doing off the pitch i think it just gives you more confidence when you step across that white line and you play on, on match day yeah true like you say um control controllables and you can't control whether the manager is going to pick you you can't control other aspects whether you're a substitute whether you're going to get on the field but just make sure you're preparing properly whether you're so wet because i've seen so many substitutes just absolutely sack the pre-match off because they're on the yeah. bench um, yep. you know, I've got on games after seven minutes because someone's got injured. That was actually against Man City. So wow. <laughs> someone got injured after seven minutes um, and I was just playing run around because Man City were popping it everywhere. It's a good job I fueled myself properly because that day I did 13 and a half K just basically chasing <laughs> the Bruyne Silver uh, Sterling. So it was, uh, wow. That was a bit of an um, Wow. So yeah, control the controllables um, and do everything properly. Um, because it really does it does count at the end of the day. And um, you might not see it now, you might not see it short term, but long term for longevity, for, for your overall health. Um, a lot of us don't know what's going on, on in the inside of the body, but if you can look after that, then you're going to be the healthiest version of yourself for a lot longer than um, you, know, you, you think at the moment. Mm, awesome. Yeah, so if we could go back, you know, to uh, your career a bit. So you said you you had a loan out to Kidderminster, uh, and then what was the next step after that? I had a loan out to Kidderminster at seventeen, and then I went back to Burnley to finish my final season of um, my scholarship uh, with them, mm. um, playing reserve team um, football and youth team football. That was when I scored my twenty seven goals in seventeen games, um, and then I had a meeting with a manager because I didn't really train with the first team. And he pulled me and just said no, I wasn't good enough for his for his team, mm. so I got released. That's when I signed for Bury for a season and played 40, 44 games in League Two as a nineteen year old. Mm. So it was a really good oh. experience. Um, and then Shrewsbury signed me on the back of that. Um, I think I played just over hundred um, a hundred games for them. Um, wow! But so from the ages of nineteen to twenty one, it really manned me up. I got kicked a lot. Um, mm. People thought I was a cocky winger just doing step overs and the cross turns and stuff, but um, it, it really uh, helped me to become mentally bulletproof to deal with setbacks. Um, and that was when I was on my honeymoon and I, I got released again due to a change of managers. Um, mm. But then um, it's been uh, an incredible journey since then. I've had Hereford, Bournemouth, QPR, um, Hull, I went on loan to um, wow. when I was leaving Bournemouth. Um, and shoes bridges previously, so um, mm -hmm. I'm out of contract at the moment. Um, I'm moving up north, um, to be closer to family. I'm down south, mm -hmm. uh, the south of England at the moment. So, once we've got where are you this, currently? Uh, we're in Bournemouth, um, okay, nice. the south of England, so right on the uh beachfront. So, it's absolutely beautiful, nice. yeah. So, yeah. we're moving up to the grim north, as they call it in England. Uh -huh. It's always raining, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want to move close to our family. My wife's um, been away from her family. I've been away from mine for um, mm -hmm. coming up to 12 years now. We moved away wow. when we were 19. So it'd be lovely to get back up there. And then um, I'd love to get a club locally um, mm -hmm. for the dreaded pre-season. But you've got yeah. to be ready for it. <laughs> of course. Of course. 
so what did you, what did you kind of what did you notice you know as you were going up the leagues just you know obviously the sheer talent but the major differences in how players um you know approached approach training approach games approach the extras what, what, what was the difference that you noticed and from a mental standpoint and a you know uh discipline standpoint yeah the um the mentality towards games like they were they were ruthless, ruthless in both boxes. The defenders wanted to head. They wanted to, you know, defend the goal with their lives. And then, you know, especially getting into the Premier League, the strikers were ruthless in front of goal. They they mm -hmm. used to take chances. League one, league two, you'd maybe get away with giving the striker two or three chances and them not scoring mm -hmm. in the Premier League. You give them one, two chances and it's in the back of the net. So, yeah, that ruthlessness, the edge, the willingness to want to win, the work mm. rate. I mean, when we got to the Premier League and the Championship, all the statistics um, were up on the board on the Monday, and you'd see the amount of distance you'd run to, for the team, um, mm. you know, the amount of pass completion, all that kind of thing. So you couldn't hide from it. You needed yeah. to be accountable for your performance, for your teammates. Um, and I think the higher up you go, that's why they're so successful because um, they want to work hard for the team and as an individual as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and I think that's a big motivation also to, you know, besides when you're a better player, when you're fitter, when you feel better, you enjoy the game more. I think that's the first thing. But I think the second thing also is you just can't hide on the pitch. You, you just can't hide. You're going to get found out if you haven't been doing extras, if you haven't been doing the little things right. Um, so I think that's crucial. Yeah, hiding's not acceptable. You can be having a bad game. You can your touch can be off. You might miss a couple of chances, but having that willingness to work for your teammate, whether you you know you're, you're having an absolute nightmare. I mean, I go back to my championship uh, game against Birmingham. I had an absolute nightmare for staff. Uh, we went in mm -hmm. one 0 up. I was surprised I didn't get dragged off. And then second half, I went back out, scored a hat trick. Um, so oh. like it's it's just. You, you need to be mentally strong. I always say 80% mm. mentality, um, then the nutrition and the technical side of the game um, and the work rate needs to you know, be on point because if your mentality is right and, and your brain's functioning and, and you feel in a good place, you're going to feel like you want to work hard. You're going to feel like you're going to, you know, you're going to be pro productive with your work and you're going to, you're going to be the best version of yourself going into the game. So, as long as you can say at the end of the 90 minutes that you give your all, then um, no one else can ask anything more of you. Mm. No, that's it's unbelievable, you know, scoring a hat trick after a shocker first half. And <laughs> that's something that I, that I always see, you know, that I always get asked by younger players is, you know, oh, I'm, I do so well in training, but when it comes to game time, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't play as well, which is obviously all, all in the mind. So, how do you kind of how do you approach the the game mentally on the weekend, especially you know as you were rising up the ranks? You know, I could imagine you were you had a bit more butterflies in your stomach when the games were coming. So, how, how did you deal with that? I mean, I always have butterflies in my stomach to this day. Um, I think people rise to the occasion, and again, going back to visualization, I visualize going out there performing well getting the better of my opponent, it'd be the right back. I'd be like, right, I'm going to twist him up, work out his strengths and weaknesses. Forget about the crowd. The crowd's amazing when you're winning um, and when you need that boost. And I've abs I've missed the crowd. Um, it's been an absolute killer um, as yeah. a professional footballer. They're a massive part of the game. But just do yourself proud. I just forget about everything else and just think about how I'm going to feel after um, when I've had a great game. Um, I'm going to twist my fall back up, um, going home to my family, uh, yes. just just be out there say, I'm going to go home to my family, I'm going to have the man of the match trophy, I'm going to score goals, I'm going to, what, whether you're a defender, I'm going to keep a clean sheet, just talk to yourself constantly. Love that. And I think Love that. when you say things out loud, it's it goes into your brain and it sinks in. Mm. And uh, I'm a mm. big believer in that. Sometimes I'll just scream out and the missile think, what is he doing? <laughs> but yeah, I think it's really important that, that self-talk, that self-confidence. Um, and yeah, train as you play, train mm. hard, and yes. then prep the same way for the game. I, I know a lot of people change uh, the routine on a game day. Why? Keep your same routine as 
as you're doing a training, whether you've got a game mm. at three o'clock in the afternoon, get up at the same time. And all people that yes. are up until 11 o'clock, they skip yes. breakfast because they just want pre-match. But in my opinion, you should stick with that routine because you can go mm. to things feeling lethargic, more of nervous course. because you haven't prepped properly. So, yeah. Um, Love that. Again, we're going back to routine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to say every day is game day. You know, and treat every day, no matter what it is, as game day. And, and whether it's training, whether you're, tra you know, playing small sided with the boys, you know, you got to treat it, treat it the same. Um, but yeah, just going back to visualization, just to give the, the listeners a little practical tip. Do you, um, you know, do you, li do you lie like kind of in a meditation pose or you, you know, sitting or are you just, you know, walking around the house thinking, how do you, do you approach it in a certain way or does it just come to you? I don't tell many people this. To be fair, I stand, I look at myself in front of the mirror. I stand in the Superman pose, just like that. Wow, <laughs> and, uh, love it. And, uh, you know, you look at yourself and you can't hide. You know, you're talking to yourself in the mirror. As you say, after a game, if you've made a mistake, don't blame others. Look at yourself in the mirror. So I do that before a game. And I visualise awesome. um, and say out loud to myself what I'm going to do well in the game. Um, mm. I think it's really powerful, really important. And... The amount of goals I've scored off the back of it through that sheer belief is is incredible. Sometimes I look back and my first season in the Premier League, I got a bit probably overwhelmed with the players you play against when you come up mm. against the likes of your United, your City, yeah. uh, Liverpool, Chelsea. Um, but, you know, in my second season, I got man of the matches against Chelsea, Man City. Wow. Um, so, you know, I improved as an individual because I looked back and I thought... I didn't do myself justice that game. Um, mm. and yeah, um, like I say, the Superman pose and, and that real visualisation. Sometimes I do it in the evening before going to mm. bed, which sometimes isn't a good thing because you're constantly awake and ticking and yeah. desperate for the game to come. But uh, yeah. it's a great tool and I'd highly recommend it. Mm. No, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, just getting to the end here. I don't want to keep you too long. It's got a couple more questions. Um, you know, we talked about in the beginning about obstacles. What is the biggest obstacle you think you've run into in your career? And, you know, if you are willing to share, how'd you overcome it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been really fortunate for right, with injuries. Um, I haven't had any bad injuries other than um, maybe you know, mm. the odd bit of tendonitis here and there, the odd little strain. So I've been yeah, really lucky in that respect. Um, and I think that comes down to doing your gym work, doing your core, all that yes. kind of thing. So that I've, I've been really lucky. Uh, the biggest obstacle, probably getting released on my honeymoon. Um, yeah. Being told I'm not good enough again. Um, because you're away thinking, I've just had a wedding here. I've got to pay for the wedding. Uh, I've no job. Where do I go from you know, from here, but then I just tried to remain positive and I knew everything happens for a reason and something good's going to come of it. And three, four days later, uh, Hereford signed me. But yeah, that was awesome. that was a tough two or three days, to be honest, especially being mm. away, not knowing what to do. So, um, of course. and then, then for the rest of it, um, throughout my journey with Bournemouth, I didn't really have any setbacks. We just from went from strength to strength because we got promoted after two seasons from League One wow. to the Championship. We spent two seasons in the Championship, got promoted to the Premier League, and then I spent five years with Bournemouth in the Premier League. So, um, wow. really, really good, um, really good memories of that journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How how are those promotions? It must have been, like you said from the beginning, just that winning feeling. Just uh, that feeling is, you know, priceless. Yeah, going back to the nutrition, that went out the window on them nights. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope yeah, so. Yeah, to, to be fair, it was incredible, especially from the Championship to the Premier League because um, we still had one game left of the season. Um, I scored the goal um, that set us off for promotion uh, from the Championship to the Premier League against Bolton. Mm -hmm. So straight wow. after the game, we were all out in time. And, and Bournemouth's like a fishbowl. Everyone's like a Bournemouth fan. And the time yeah, was yeah, absolutely yeah. bouncing. And we had a great night. Um, we were up on stage and um, all the fans were down below. So it was a nightmare getting to the toilet that night, though, because we had to shimmy in and out of the place. Yeah. <laughs> but no, wow. incredible memories. And um, they'll live long in the memory bank, for sure. Yeah, it's what you do it for. Um also, so one other question I always like to ask, uh, you know, guests is, 
if there's, you know, with the knowledge that you have today, um, is there one age that you would go back to? Uh, and would you tell yourself what, what type of advice would you tell yourself or, or change, um, you know, with the, with the knowledge that you have today? Yeah, I'd go back to 27 uh, when we got promoted to the Premier League and just um, say to myself, have no fear. Um, I was untested in the Premier League. I'd never stepped foot uh, in the mm. Premier League. And I was in awe of some of my heroes, you know, that season. Steven Gerrard was still playing. Really. Um, so we played again. Ibrahimovic was at United. Um, so, yeah, just have no fear. Um, because I probably, looking back then, I probably did have a little bit of fear, wondering, mm -hmm. you know, how I would perform at the top level. But, yeah, I wish I'd have played like I did in my second season. Um, yeah, So I, I showed a lot more confidence and belief in my ability mm -hmm. um, coming, mm -hmm. up, coming up against top players because that's what everyone wants to do. They want to test themselves against the best in the world, whether, yeah. whether no matter what type of uh, job you're in. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, and, and just, just to finish it off, uh, what are what would your top two to three piece of advice be for any footballer looking to sign, you know, his or her first professional contract or, you know, they're out of contract now and they're looking for that next one, just to kind of sum up the conversation and, you know, a couple pieces of advice. Yeah, just work hard, enjoy the process. Um do everything you can to, to to become the best version of yourself, and um, I think things fall into place. I mean, if you if you are talented enough and you put the hard work in, then you'll have a successful career, whether it be in football or whether it doesn't work out in football, and then you mm -hmm. move on to the next phase of your life. I mean, I'm at that stage now where I'm sort of I love helping other athletes and and people yes. to to not improve themselves, improve the game. Um, and it's something I would love to go into. But I'm torn because I feel in great shape and I, I want to go back playing. And I feel like yeah. it's something to offer on the playing side. So it's mm. just keep growing and learning as an individual because um, I learned from an early age that football doesn't last forever. So you've got yeah. to have another string to your bow, always get another string to your bow. But always have that goal in sight set your goals and your 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 visions big mm -hmm. because you know if if you're continuously trying to develop and reach them goals then um you're going to improve as an individual as a person and um you know things start mm -hmm. to fall into place mm -hmm. no oh, absolutely man absolutely so hey I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh taking your time and being so humble to to come on uh really really learned a lot i'm sure every single person who is watching this and will listen to us and will watch this um will thank you and, and learn a lot so um appreciate that and if people want to get in touch with you you know uh maybe work with you in, on the nutrition side what's the best place to contact you and where to find you yeah i mean uh on instagram the foodie footballer or i've got an email the foodie footballer.com um at hotmail.com sorry uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open minded for all questions. Um, I, I want to help as many people as I can. I think um, I've learned a lot, um, and I think it's important to get to know the individual. I've, a lot of people say you should be doing this, you should be doing that, but it doesn't work for everyone. I think it's important to get to know the person, the individual, what they like, what they dislike. Um, yeah, yeah and, and I'm open minded for, for any questions. Um, mm. Just get in touch and uh, I'll finish off by saying I think it's amazing what you do as well. Absolutely love love your page and uh, what you do for people, all the free content you give from. Um, so you know, well done to you for that, mate. I appreciate that. And one more thing: How did you learn to cook like that, man? I mean, some of those <laughs> recipes are looking are looking nice, man. You you know what? I couldn't boil an egg at twenty six. <laughs> wow! Uh, it's all about repetition, huh? Yeah, to be fair, when I was when we had our second child, because we've no family down south on, uh, in Bournemouth, it's all uh, up north. So we had our second child, and it was my way of helping out around the house. Um, and it coincided with me doing my nutrition course as well. So I started awesome. to cook healthily and 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 just just learn on the job, really. Oh. Now, uh, now I'm not quite Michelin star, but I do try. <laughs> yeah, you'll be there soon. Just like you said, everything happens for a reason at the right time, you know. Definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, 
I think it's a big part of life. Um, of course. You know, it's, it's, it's a pyramid at the end of the day, and uh, it's never plain sailing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, I appreciate it, and I'm sure we will connect in the future, you know, uh, you know, link up and do some good things together. So I appreciate your time, um, and have a good one, man. Definitely, mate. Appreciate that, mate. Hope you have a good day. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Cheers, mate. Take care. Cheers.